live from our studios here in Cologne, Germany. I am Lee D-Man Smith and here alongside me is Trevor Quickshot Henry once again as we bring you day two of our 16 game Super Week. Yes, we have six big games to play today and now that we're on the downslope of the summer split, the teams will need to bring their A game if they want to stay in the running for a possible spot at the 2014 World Championships. But before we get to those games, let's take a quick look back at some of yesterday's highlights. First up, well, it was the LCS record set by X Peke at 21 minutes 51 seconds. It was slightly adjusted. We were a little bit too late on that. Yeah, one second quicker mm. than we had reported yesterday and breaking Froggen's record from last week from the same game. Soaz pulled out a top lane. Ziggs managed to dominate up in that top lane. And it's interesting to see Soaz follow that up with the top lane Lee Sin. So having some fun with champions. Yeah, we'll see what he brings out today. That one, of course, wasn't the only exciting champion as Overplow played Zerath and Creaton. He finally picked up Tristana in Europe. So it was great to see Overpower returning to that trend of playing those slightly different mid lane champions. It ended up performing pretty well and his team secured the win. On the same token, Creatin grabbed that Tristana for the first time in Europe, but we have seen it over in North America and in Korea. You can argue the merits of his build, but it was nice to see Europe picking up another ADC and hopefully we can see that trend continue. Also alongside him was Zyra. Zyra support, is it back? That's the question. Played him three out of five games yesterday. Will it be rejoined by Ash? Well, Woolite's Ash left a lot to be desired, <laughs> but I think part of the reason that Zara is back and why it's quite an exciting turn of events is the changes to support items, the more expensive, um, oh, I just forgot the word. The heal, it's cleanse, Mikhail's Crucible, thank you. Um, it just means that there's more options because Zyra's rushing that Leandre's Torment, She's doing very well with the heavy disengage alongside the likes of Nami. So. New supports and hopefully, as well, seeing more options. Nami, new favorite as well. Of course, you were sending us your favorite moments from the games as the hashtag LCS big plays. So let's take a look at the top three. First up, this was from the SK versus Gambit game. Sven Skerns, flashy footwork. It came in from at Saberwolf, and he said that flash kick to make up for the dodged ward jump was very flashy. Well played, Sven Skerns. This was your third most talked about play. That was so low, no point for oh. Gambit to do anything. Edward Whoa! Portal kicked in straight away, Soul Shackles comes out, that's gonna be enough. SK went on to him, we saw the kick flash from Svenskan is kicking back to the team. They get a kill, Darren Tilbury in behind him, but by this point, game were too weak. Such a great kick, starts the animation and then flashes to make sure it's the right direction. I can't react that quick. No, not can I. <laughs> well, the next one is also from Fnatic versus Rocket, and this features some flashy teamwork. This comes to us from at Shingeki no Momo, I think. That ex Peke play, getting the kill, then taking the Thresh Express. So sneaky. This was your second most talked about LCS big play. They have to back away from this one. They're looking to engage, jumping, counter strike, lands on five members. Peke comes in, Shockwave does get himself a kill, and a lantern from Yellowstar pulls him to safety. Beautiful play by Fnatic. They jump in, expect a flash away, gets a kill, and then just takes the land to safety. I said at the start, they have to back away. They didn't listen to me, <laughs> and that was what you get. So Fnatic went and took that win. Then, of course, there was Shook's incredible Lee Sin mechanics versus the Super Hot crew. This came in from at Neon Lol, and he said, Shook makes flashy Lee Sin play Q to a minion, 
W to award, and then flash ulti rise kick back into Frog. And this was your most talked about moment in the European LCS yesterday. So at least there's that small respite oh. from the rest of the crew, but I think they're oh. going to dive selfie. Oh, there is the Q, and he gets the kick onto him as well, and that is typical shock, ladies and gents. They take the damage onto the support. The minion's actually been pushed, uh, pushed back from the turret. It doesn't matter. Alliance get the kill onto Selfie. So they did dive Selfie in a lot of Lee Sin plays yesterday. You guys at home, remember to tweet the awesome moments from today's games to at LOL Esports and use the hashtag LCS Big Plays. Now it's time for a look at the table as we head into the day. Alliance have a comfortable hold on first place now with a 13 wins and two losses. And they're on a six game win streak. While SK Gaming, well, they are three games behind them in second place at 10 and five. Yeah, and right behind them are Fnatic in third. They played fantastically yesterday to go two and O. Oh, and Millennium have dropped down to fourth position with eight wins and seven losses. Having lost two out of their last three games, they've got to stop the rot before that gets worse. And those chanting standings <laughs> may change further as we kick off the day with the top of the table clash between Alliance and SK Gaming. Then Rockout will be taking on Millennium and then the super hot crew will face off against SK Gaming. It will then be the turn of Millennium versus Gambit, followed by the Copenhagen Wolves against the super hot crew. And we'll close the day with the clash between Fnatic and Gambit Gaming. So, for more information about the schedule, the teams, and the players, head over to lolesports.com where you can find all that and much more. Yeah, follow all of the teams on the road to the Summoner's Cup, and you can vote on today's matchups. Just give a thumbs up on the schedule to the team that you think will win each matchup, and we'll check in before each game to see how each of you have voted. And to find out how you can join us here in the Cologne studio to watch the European LCS live, just click on the tickets at the top of the page. So let's head over to Twitter and let us know which team do you think has the strongest duo lane in European LCS and why? I hate this question because it's, it's so relative. It's mm. so relative. But I do think you cannot deny the power of Tabs and Nif. Yep. They are just doing top so of the phenomenally table well. Pattern. I'm also a big fan of Mr. Rawls and Kassing, I think they're a great pair, and I rate uh, Mr. Rawls quite highly. Mm -hmm. So you guys at home, send your answers to us at LOL Esports, with this time the hashtag LCS, and we'll read our favorite responses later on in the show. Now it's time for our first match of the day between Tabletop in Alliance and SK Gaming. These two teams have been vying for the top of the standings, but in the both of the previous encounters, it has been Alliance that has come out on top. Most recently, while on the road in London, Alliance took SK Gaming a one-sided match where Froggen on Yasuo picked them apart piece by piece. But if you look at yesterday's performance versus the Super Hog crew, it might have been a victory for Alliance, but they struggled to close out the game despite the big lead they built up early on. Yeah, so in yesterday's match against the Super Hog crew, Alliance found ways to open up a sizable lead before they would lose a significant team fight and then they would blow that big lead. And this actually happened several times over the course of the match. While Alliance did eventually win the game and close it out, it does demonstrate small weaknesses in their play. I think in general, Alliance have just shown that they can deal with SK Gaming, the 2-0 up, along with the rest of the European LCS. But winning this game is where Alliance can ensure a head-to-head -head advantage over their closest composition, uh, competition in terms of potential tiebreakers at the end of the split. Absolutely. For SK Gaming, this match has to be the proving ground. If they can't take a win over Alliance this split, then it will surely cause some doubts in their minds as they close onto the playoffs. SK Gaming took down Gambit yesterday and dismantled them by securing all of the Dragons, not really being challenged. No, they really weren't, D-Man. SK just looked patient, they looked confident, and, you know, in particular, N-rated on Magana. He landed a bunch of bindings that secured multiple kills. Sven Skeron on Lee Sin, he had some really flashy moments, and it was a great start to Super Week for the team, as they must be looking to catch up to Alliance, and picking up a win will help them out. I think they're going to need to exhibit the same level of control if they want to defeat Alliance here today, and they need to deliver a strong performance against the league leaders, because if they don't, they're never going to be able to challenge for that top spot. Well, despite the 0-2 record against a very confident Alliance, SK Gamers Jesus isn't intimidated by his all-star opponent in the mid lane, while Candy Panda, he likes the idea of taking down the number one team in the European LCS. SK again. Actually, it's looking really good against them this season. We are 2-0. We know how to beat them, so it should be under 3 0 We don't want to lose to Alliance again, so we're going to prepare a lot for them, but I wouldn't say we prepare any more than the other team. Being the leader, we don't really want to drop any games. It's very important for us to keep winning, so we will definitely prepare our best for every single game. The longer the season goes, the better we will get. 
and we will catch up to them at the end of the season. We kind of overrate them ourselves in our mind and it gets to us and we just play really bad against them. I don't know why. And we need to not overhype them and consider them like a normal team rather than a lion. It's always fun to play against a high skilled player like Fragen. I've personally done really well against him in our matches. For me, it's nothing special. Like, I, I play against people on his skill level every day. Compared to the other teams, and they're not improving that much, honestly, I would say it's it's pretty weird with SK. They have been pretty good for the entire split, but I haven't really seen much improvement in how they have been playing. They're the best team right now. It's always a good challenge. And they're the team to beat, so we will beat them. For me, the standout thing in that video is how SK actually talk about Alliance. It's only been a split. They finished fourth in the playoffs. Yeah. But now the top of the table, they're already talking about the mental attitude of coming up against this top team. And it's not the same message across mm. the team. Freddy is saying we overhype them. Candy Pan is saying, you know, we've just got to try hold back. And Jez is like, whatever, I deal with Froggen every day. So we're going to have to see who comes out on top. Well, let's check out the lineups for these two teams. Over on the blue side, it's Alliance. That means Wicked's in the top lane. Shook is the jungler. Froggen in the mid lane. Tabs is the AD carry and Nip on support. And on the red side, it is SK Gaming with Steady Freddy in the top lane. Sven Skaren playing the jungle. Jez is in the mid lane. Candy Pan on AD carry and Enrated playing the support role. So let's take a look and see how you predicted this match will play out. According to the votes on LOLAsports.com, you gave Alliance by 84%. That is a big, big vote for first versus second place. That is a very big vote, but I distinctly remember a 93% or 94% vote in favor of Alliance yeah. in a game they lost against the Super Hot Crew many weeks back. So, you know, public opinion does matter, and standings matter. They're 2-0 up, but we'll see if Alliance can deliver. They are chasing that. Uh, all-time win record of Europe of nine wins, which they have the possibility of hitting at the end of the Super Week. Yeah, they're going to get a perfect Super Week. We'll see how that works out for them, of course. The other team to beat them was Gambit as well. Let's not count. They're the only two teams to beat Alliance so far this season. Pick and bounds are about to get underway. Let's see how this one works out. So the obvious picks of Kale, Cassidy, are definitely ones that I think will be considerations here. I, I'm also interested to see if N-Rated or Nif go for the likes of Thresh or Morgana or, you know, alternate between them. But one of the big stories for me is whether or not Shook or Svenskeren get their hands on Lee Sin. Shook has played Lee Sin nine times this split. Svenskeren has played it eight times this split. It is definitely a de facto go-to jungler for both of these teams. And I feel Shook and Sven are currently the strongest Lee Sin's players in the jungle in the European LCS. Well, the fact that SK have banned out a Lee tells you they may be focusing towards it. Freddy's Aatrox banned out there. He's been playing that in the last few games. Of course, Zeke's taken away, kind of a standard that one. Jezus has been picking that one up. It does mean that Kale's still out there, Cassidy's still out there, Yasuo's still out there. A lot of big top lane and uh, mid laners for Froggen and Jezus. We'll see what in the next band B. SK, considering this one, there's a lot of thought going into these pick and bands. These are not coming thick and fast. It is a Relia, so that's another top laner. That may open up Renekton for Freddy. Yeah. Kale going from Alliance. Another top laner. Wicked has played that Kale in the past. We've seen her mid, we've seen her top multiple times. I want to just contrast quickly the faces of Alliance today in comparison to Super Hockey yesterday. This is stern and focused. Twisted fate. Cassidy was banned out. It leaves Yasuo open. Jax is open. Of course, you've also got Renekton open, and there is the leasing you were talking about. Sven Skeren is going to be the one to lock that in, and Morgana, who has been banned out quite regularly, will be picked up by Unrated. So the question for me, do Alliance go for their bottom lane, potentially locking in Thresh Lucian, Bram Lucian, Nami Lucian? It is a possibility for Tabs. Tabs could also go Caitlyn if he wants to, and he's been doing a very good job with Caitlyn um, in recent weeks, you know, especially on 4.10. The leasing lock is not too surprising for me, but my wonder is, does Shook go Evelyn and just play that sort of split push gank with Twisted Fate combination? Or does he want to play a different jungler and surprise everybody? Definitely taking their time on the side of Alliance. Well, top lane Lulu is what we saw from Wicked yesterday. It is a possibility in there. Evelyn, you would feel, would be the fallback champion for Shook, of course, with Elise being banned out. Jarvan has been picked up by a number of people, but Shook has yet to show that one, as far as I remember. Yeah, I have, I, you know, Shook has really been sticking to the sort of trifecta of champions. Nine games in Lee and five games in Elise. This will only be his second game on Evelyn, if it gets locked in. And in terms of the duo, in yesterday's composition, Alliance ran Caitlyn and Zyra as their uh, duo lane. And the Zyra was primarily to deal with a very aggressive, in-your-face dive 
uh, set of champions. And that is a very quick lock-in from the SK side. That is a Caitlyn choice over a Lucian choice. Oriana also being locked in, maybe Jez thinks he can go for that record, but Cogmore gets picked and locked by Tabs alongside Nami. So a lot of late game damage. There's a decent front line with Evelyn and the Lulu combination. In addition to the disengage power that Nami offers, this is something we touched on in the pregame, is how important the uh, 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 ability to disengage can be. What I like about Alliance's comp is they can impact side lanes very effectively with the Evelyn and the Twisted Fate combo. For SK, with Renekton and with Lee Sin, they're going to be looking to get in your face and get ahead as early as possible. Well, Freddy pulling his 100% win rate on that Renekton on the line here up against Alliance. Does give him a champion he knows full well. The question is, will they be buddy system in their jungle? It looks to me like I think that's what they're going to go with. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely is something that Alliance may be slightly more inclined to go towards, and the reason I say that, if they go for the buddy system, SK has got the opportunity to try and push lanes quite quickly. With the Caitlyn uh, and a long range very early on, she can punish towers in those lane swap scenarios. In addition to having that Renekton and Lee Sin, who are great at the early stages of the game, I feel SK are the ones with the priority to make early moves, because they're going to have a power spike at an earlier stage than Alliance will. Well, we'll see how this one works out, ladies and gentlemen, now that you've seen the picks and bans. Do you still think Alliance will win it? 84% of you did before. Tweet hashtag allwin or hashtag SKWin to at LOL Esports. We'll check out the results shortly. Twisted Fate, of course, picked up by Froggen once again. Yep. A very successful champion for him over the last few weeks. And he pulls gold cards every yeah. time he ganks. Yesterday without was scary. Fail. Without fail. We had a fantastic tweet saying he couldn't use the football skin because he never <laughs> pulls red cards unless he intends to. Doesn't send anyone off. No, definitely He's not. good guy Froggen, after all. The one thing that I do like about uh, SK's comp is it has the ability to punish Alliance's composition in the early stages of the game. Lulu needs time to ramp up. Twisted Fate needs time to ramp up. Cogmore needs time to ramp up. So while they're on that ramping, it's up to SK to make the plays. Let's see how they do climb that ramp. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Blue team starting out as Alliance, the current number one team, and they have a 2-0 record over SK Gaming, who are going to be starting out as the red team. We'll see whether we have any level one plays. Obviously a difference between the two top laners, Doran's ring, of course, versus the Doran's shield, expected. But I want to see how they're going to start this level one fights. Yeah, and, and very importantly is how Alliance handle the protection of tabs. If you look, um, you're going to have Glitter Launch, you're going to have Wild Growth, of course, and the Disengage from Nami. But if Renekton or Lee Sin manage to deliver that command attack and dissonance shockwave combo onto tabs, there is a very real possibility of him getting blown up super early on in those fights. And that's what SK will be looking to do. For the time being, neither team has gone for any sort of aggressive or even defensive wards. All trinkets, with the exception of wickets, are available. And we need to watch for the next 30 or 40 seconds. It looks like it's going to be a standard defensive start to the game. Yeah, nobody going too aggressive early on. One minute ten, so a long time before the buffs even spawn. You can see Froggen still hanging around in that death bush just off the side. Shook is keeping Jezza's occupied. Just out of vision, of course. He's stealthed up as Evelyn to see whether... It's looking like they want to go for that Red Invade Alliance, but I don't think it's going to work out for them. Because there is a ward in place. It will spot them coming early. And you can see Sunscorn and Freddy are already in place waiting. Yeah, so nothing nothing exciting going to happen in the early stages of the game. But I do, you know, I'm casting my, my mind back to, I think, an SK versus Super Hot Crew game where they also ran a Renekton and Elise in combination, also on the red side of the map. And in that matchup, I was worried about SK's late, mid to late game scaling opportunities or abilities. Um, and no, it was Gambit, actually. And they just played so aggressive after the 15 or so minutes. They got like one or two key items and then just started challenging over and over and over and picking as many fights as possible in their opponent's jungles. I want to see if they're going to do the same thing with their comp. You can see a couple of SK fans have woken up, but it's still 69% to Alliance in the vote. So you guys feel that, of course, frogging on that Twisted Fate have got the edge. We'll see how it works out. Nif taking a good Piltover Peacemaker from Candy Panda there. Didn't catch any minions with it, so he just did the full max damage on it. Yeah, it's actually very important to note that Nif and Tabs arrived late to the lane. So Candy Panda and Rated are going to have a uh, experience lead as well as a CS lead for these first few levels. But you do somewhat expect that. The very long range of both Morgana and Caitlyn against the 
you know, lower range uh, Cogmore without his bio arcane barrage means they can punish. They can use those headshot procs. Luckily, though, as long as Nif has mana, he can sustain through uh, much of that poke. Well, they know the exact amount required to make sure those CS aren't missed. And it keeps them both hitting level two as well. Happy to push out. Shook, of course, double buffed up as well as Sven Skeren. No early invades from them. Tabs going a little bit aggressive and putting some good damage down on Candy Panda. Very, very good trade. Tabs with the uh, attack damage bonus from Nif and his obvious bio arcane, which is now free on Cogmore, just gets all of the range and trades evenly. Candy Panda has burned through his potion and there's no more sustain in this lane. So if he does take more of those trades from being slightly overextended, he's obviously going to fall further and further behind. The other lanes, I mean, Jezus and Froggen appear to just be trading quite card. evenly. Finally a red card from Froggen. Not sure if he wanted a gold then, but he pulled a red nonetheless. I would I would theorize it helped him with last hitting and, and farming. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're being far too gracious with these pro players. At the moment it is uh, Jezus, of course, with us. Seriously. We'll keep our eyes on that one. I don't think Froggen's going to let him get a record, especially one that Froggen set himself the other week. But there we are, having a potential gank. No, Jezzes is going to back away. Shook coming down the bottom. Can he pan a low on health down here? Let's see if he goes for it. If he gets caught by a bubble, he could get taken down. But if, as long as he dodges the bubble, Candy Panda should be all right. Oh, got in the act of prison. That's going to be Candy Panda going now. He's going to try and get away from him. Flash comes in. Shook follows it through. And it's Myth that gets himself first blood. And they're not over yet. So much damage onto Enrated. That's Flash and Heal burned from Candy Panda in reply to a Flash from Shook. So if Shook wants to rinse and repeat, grab himself another kill down in the bottom lane. Uh, first blood was secured by Nif, though. So not the ideal target. But regardless, well executed gank. Good bubble from there. Yeah, double assist as well, of course. Don't forget, with the juggler involved, it was a flash used by Shook, but nevertheless, if he gets a secured kill, it works out. Sven Skirin quickly going for a counter invade. Knows that Shook is not in and around this area, so he's going to steal away the large wolf gap. So in terms of the CS numbers, even in the bottom lane, uh, Tabs will get some time to pull slightly ahead. I want to highlight why Jezus is ahead of Twisted Fate. Thanks to Oriana's passive of Clockwork Windup, she's got an auto attack damage modifier that helps her in trades. In addition, you can see how much damage in zoning Ooh. Command Attack does. So we do see they're considering a dive, but once Shook shows his face, they're going to back away. Another so card. Orianna's always going to do well in the early stages, and once Froggen gets some more items, maybe working towards an Athenes, um, if he wants to go that route, or rush Morellanomicon, that will help him with his wave clear, that'll help him keep further back and trade somewhat more evenly with Jesus Orianna. Freddy sticking with his triple Doran's build in this top lane on Renekton. Two swords along, of course, with that shield. Despite the changes, he's sticking with it. So it's interesting to see how Freddy goes with this one. Remember, they got that big 100% win record. Did teleport back to the tower as well. Wicked yet to go back, so he's going to hold out. I think he wants to get himself that chalice early on. We'll see whether he goes with the triple Doran's ring, of course, which a lot of people on Lulu have been building. He's missing a lot of CS here. Yeah, and if memory serves, yesterday Wicked did not actually go that route. Uh, he went very early Ionian Boots of Lucidity. <laughs> well played by Freddy. And I think Wicked's actually got enough money to pick that uh, those boots up if he wants to do a similar sort of build to yesterday. Typical, as we're going to talk about, he's going to grab himself Dawn's Rings. I'll bet you any money. One, two. Yes, there we go. He cheated. He cheated. Yesterday I said Triple Dorans, he goes Ionian. Today I said Ionian, he goes Triple Dorans. End of the day, there's multiple options. Yeah. Um, considering Freddy's got so many Dorans, he needs something to continue spamming Glitter Lancers as well as the additional HP to help out in trades. So we may see a fairly extended laning phase from both of these teams. No one's even made any gestures towards Dragons, and in straight up lanes, it generally means Dragons come later. Yeah, it's something, honestly, we, we only see the three and a half minutes Dragons maybe once a day at best, whereas of course North America, you're generally seeing it every single day. Just different styles, longer laning phases. Sven Skeren spotted out by that ward, that's gonna give him vision. Of course, Froggen will be well aware of that. Tab's caught out with the Dark Binding. It's not gonna get followed up on though. Candy Panda was worried about the threat of the bubble from Nif. Very smart play from Tabs. Even though he was caught by the Dark Binding, the Void Ooze just made any sort of engagement uh -oh. difficult. Sven's caught out. He's or not. not gonna get away unless Froggen flashes. He gets into the gold card. The good wild card follows through. There's good shockwave from Jezus. Defensively used along with that defensive ball. And it saves him for now. Flash used by Froggen as well as the Ghost. Yeah, so a summoner spells burned across the board. Sven Skeren ends up trading Flash for Flash as far as Froggen is concerned. The reason that's important is if Sven Skeren can heal and come back to the middle lane next time Shockwave is up, they can punish Froggen. And they also know Destiny's down. So this should allow SK to either make a play in another lane 
or possibly even consider making some moves for Dragon if they get an advantage in this bottom lane. Aggression from Nif immediately gets a 90 caliber net out of Candy Panda, keeping him out of range, of course. He's going to be losing out on the experiences. 4.11 changes will be coming on those, of course, the minion changes, but then we are on 4.10 still here while you guys at home may have upgraded this morning. It is all about 4.10 and Wicked trying to keep that pressure on. The Glitterland's doing work on Freddy right now. Yeah, all props to Freddy. He's got a, a, a decent CS advantage over Wicked in this lane. We, every time we have caught a, vis a glimpse of him, he is playing fairly aggressively, using the sustain from that Cold Meek to just keep himself relevant. He's obviously got the 6% uh, lifesteal from both of those Dorans. So he's got decent sustain, and there's no real kill threat from Wicked. Freddy has to make a big misplay or get ganked by Shook. Uh, to run the risk of getting taken out. And for the time being, teams are very, very even. Jez is still with a small CS advantage in the mid lane, but it's countered by the fact Fence Karen is slightly behind in the jungle. Oh, Froggen going to try and keep his pressure on Jezus. He's going to keep him ticking here. And more importantly for Jezus, of course, every time Froggen goes away, he needs to punish that lane. He needs to take that tower down. We saw it a couple of times. Pressure almost certainly is on Froggen's turret rather than Jez's. He's be able to keep them away from that one. You can see turret barely touched so far. Bottom lane have hit level six. I see where they go near the thing. The bubble not landing because the dark black shield blocks it out there. But Candy Panda starting to take that range poke now from Tabs. Yeah, now that Tabs and Nif have hit level six, the threat of being caught by a bubble into oh. a knockup is very high. Good flash from Candy Panda. Well, the wave used, but that flash is going to be on a much longer cooldown. So Alliance will be. Relaying that information and Shook, who is down in this bottom area of the map, may actually look to go for a gank here. We're going to get a lovely uh, siren Oh, Nif sound lovely. Nif <laughs> we'll have to get Nif to sing that on stage after the game, I think. Um, but a good, a good attempt. I mean, trading Tidal Wave, which is 110 second cooldown, for a Flash, which is around 300 seconds, that's a trade you'll take any day of the week. We've already seen Shook ganking bottom lane. Well, Candy Panda had his Flash, and he hasn't returned since. Destiny's almost available. Shook should be able to gank. So if uh, SK push at all in that lane, there's going to be the threat of Froggen jumping in there to join a party. So CS being gifted across there, the Wolves to Froggen. Maybe he feels there's a bit of a challenge laid down by Peke yesterday. I'm not too sure if he's going to be quite catching in at the moment. Jez is, is looking strong for it. We'll see how it works out between those two mid laners. Froggen, I think he's got his mindset on ganks more than CS and he's going to be looking around to try and go aggressive. Let's have a look at Candy Panda and see what he's building here. Of course, we've seen a number of items. We're expecting the Infinity Edge to be started out by him, but he's got the makings of a Blade of the Rune King. This is a little bit risky. We'll get to the items in a moment because of the fact Destiny is available. So SK Gaming have got three members, but they run the risk of being flanked. There's the Destiny we talked about. There's no Tidal Wave. So Alliance feeling a little safe, and we need to see who is going to initiate the fight. SK pulled away. So, you know, Dragon's slowly resetting. And if Alliance commit to this, they're coming in from two flanks. They decide against it because they didn't have tabs. They're trying to delay, yeah, they're trying to delay. They didn't have tabs there, but it forces SK away nonetheless, so they didn't get that dragon down. Alliance happy to just hold on in the lanes for a little bit longer. They're going to keep this wave pushing, and now Nif looking to get onto Candy Pond, and that black shield's going to have to be so on point from N-rated if he is to prevent that. Yeah, and, and at this point in time, Candy Panda has now slowly started to fall behind in terms of range. As Tabs is getting closer to maxing that bio arcane barrage, he'll have a few seconds where he can out-trade with Candy Panda from a safer distance. And if Candy tries to get in range, Tabs can use that Void Ooze to basically zone out, prevent anybody you know, jumping onto him or uh, uh, closing the distance. So uh, it's an interesting lane, and Candy's now slowly falling further behind CS, considering he was ahead for the first three or four levels. Fiendish Codex picked up by Wicked, so he's going to get himself a little bit more shield. Hasn't gone for the Athenes yet, doesn't feel the need to just burn through that mana. Happy to just continue. But Freddy, look at this, different stuff for him as well. Spectral Cow building into the lane. Well, with the amount of magic damage from everyone in Alliance, I mean, even Cogmore's got magic damage. That's quite a smart pickup. We've also seen top laners rushing Banshee's Veils, not too uncommonly. So, bottom lane, Tidal Wave is up, Shook is available, there's no destiny. So we need to see if Nif can actually send anybody on a surf ride, because one person can get knocked up, while the other will obviously be shielded by that black shield. Well, Flash Soul Shackles is available for Enrated. If he catches it, that's going to be the prison. The bubble catches on Candy Panda, quickly takes that ride. The Ignite was used, but he's forced back. Yeah, Summon a Heal burned again. So another Tidal Wave plus Ignite in exchange for that Summoner spell. Svenskeren is moving in, but they stood right on top of a ward. Destiny still not up for Froggen. So Alliance focusing Candy Panda and Enrated, trying to get tabs ahead. 
as quickly as possible, and it is working out. The pressure and the presence from their aggressive play means Candy Pan is falling behind. Oh, I think Jezzes would like nothing more than to steal those wraiths away, but instead he was forced to back off. Froggen shows himself. This bottom lane still is the focus. Remember, Destiny not up just yet, but it will be shortly. Jezzes' his job is going to be to keep him grounded, make sure he can't get away. He's going to have the only way to do that is to catch him with a shockwave, and yep. he tries to destiny away. I do want to highlight the pregame video where Jezus is like, look, it's Alliance. I'm not bothered. I play against people of Froggen's caliber all the time in Challenger and, and in solo queue. And he's got a CS advantage over Froggen. Froggen has tried to roam with TF, not been successful yet. And when we, oh, Candy Panda with another bubble. He must be very thirsty today. Um, when we go back to uh, last, yeah, let's see if Froggen can get Jezus. Oh, he's going to get the Destiny. That's going to give him full vision as he goes through the bush. Shook comes around again. Shockwave pulls Froggen back, but Jezus is not getting out of this one. Froggen gets the kill, has to flash away. The danger of Sven going nearby forces that. Oh, they're going to go on N-Rated now next. And you can see N-Rated taking all the damage. Tab's got one or two more hits, flashes out, and gets away with so little health. So getting another kill on the board. This time it is Shook plus Froggen that run down Jezus. Going to steal the buff away, and he has a two on two. Sven Skerin's in all sorts of trouble. He did get the blue, but I'm not sure he's going to get away with this one. Wiki comes around, the basic attack should be enough. Now they turn their attention to Freddy. Froggen joins the party. Gold card pulled, stun goes down, wild card's through. Froggen gets himself the kill. It's a double for Alliance. 4 0. I'm not quite sure why SK were going for that invade. They had just lost their mid laner. Sven Skerin pulls Freddy down from that top lane, and they just get surrounded by Shook and Froggen. End up giving up two additional kills. What was looking like a very even, very close laning phase with actually probably a CS advantage in favor of SK has now gone completely the opposite direction thanks to Alliance ensuring they punish the invades and they're creating opportunities. Shook's ganks have been significantly more impactful than Sven's Karen's ganks. And Sven needs to get in the game if he wants to make up this gold, de gold deficit. Well, SK Gaming are going to go straight in for the Dragon here. Of course, Destiny was down. Everything cooled down for Alliance. So this may be SK being able to steal this one. Shook's going to try and get in and smite it away. He has got it available if he was to sneak in, but he spotted out. That's going to be... SK is going to get the catch on towards it. Shook has to back away. Teleport used by Wicked. A little bit late on the party this time around. The Void is in the way. Catch is beautiful from Nymph there. The bubble on towards... Oh, uh, Jezus gets him down. One more shot. Candy Panda goes down. And Rated caught out. He gets stunned down. It's a double for Tabs. And Alliance again get themselves three more kills. Three for zero. They steal the blue buff, potentially, and... They managed to get, you know, all of those kills onto Froggen and to Tabs. They lost the Dragon, yes, but in the, the big picture, they're going to come out very, very happy. The gold on their carries is absolutely massive. SK Gaming was somewhat split. They wanted to focus down Shook, but the problem they had, they didn't realize that Tabs and Nif were coming up from the river. So because of that fact, it just meant that uh, Nif was able to knock people up and set up a bunch more kills. Yeah, and of course, two ultimates used on Shook as well before that fight, trying to desperately to catch on towards him. Bottom tower goes down, Tabs took that. Of course, you saw Freddy taking the top through it down as well. Tabs actually very vocal in the uh, 4.10 patch notes, talking about how if your enemy is going for an Infinity Edge, you have to force them out of the lane. He's been doing that the whole game. Candy Panda still only got that pickaxe, along with the Berserker Greaves, yet to build anything else, while Tabs, of course, going for the Trinity Falls first. Yeah, he should be able to finish that, and he just did a moment ago. Very impressive play from Tabs and Nif. They played passive until they were level 4 or level 5. And as soon as they hit level 4, Nif just kept landing key bubbles onto Candy Panda, and he was always at low HP. Now keep in mind, there's no flash on Candy Panda. Shook doesn't have the support of the rest of his lanes, but uh -oh. here comes Froggen. And rated in trouble, gold card pulled. He does stop the stun. I'm not sure if it's enough though. Froggen comes around, a good kick from Svensko and should save them. But no, Shook actually thrown down his ultimate. They want to catch on towards this one. Have they got the damage? Oh, what a beautiful gold card on Svensko. Wild card thrown through. Svensko gives himself up as his life. Sacrificial lamp to save Candy Panda and Enrated. Again, Alliance just force a kill. They set their sights on a target and they run that target down. With the exception of the first Destiny from Froggen not getting a kill, every single one since then has worked out in his favor. And it just feels like every time SK make a move around the map, Alliance are there to counter it. They're, they've always got a counterplay in mind and they've built themselves up a 4,000 gold lead before the 20 minute mark. It's a big, big lead, as you mentioned. 8-0 as well. 
Alliance are in danger of steamrolling over SK Gaming as they move towards this red buff area. Freddy quickly alerted, and he's back in the hell away from that top turret. It is the another inner outer turret that they are aiming for. And Alliance is going to take this one with ease. Look at the vision that Alliance have got on the map. Part of the reason they were so confident in running up through that river, they knew where, if and where people were going to be when Chasers was running. They've got vision in the bottom half, they've got vision in the top half. The entire Alliance team has made an informed decision to shove this lane down, and SK are a little late to reply. Jezus is nowhere there, Enrate is nowhere there. Alliance can take this if they focus it down. They may be able to get in the middle turret, Jezus, but that's going to be an inner for Alliance. The bottom turret still being pushed, and Alliance are pinging it and saying, they're still down here. You know what? We can still keep going. Candy Panda hasn't started to recall yet. Jezus has evened up, so it's going to be two towers for two in the big picture, but of course that's two towers in one lane. So an inner turret is always more valuable. Alliance also may get positioning on this mid turret from SK if they shove with a wave. We need to see how heavily they commit, because it looks like SK can get in place to defend. Jezus does walk past the ward, gives him vision. Froggen's destiny was available in a second's time. Shook gonna get caught out with the dark binder. It's <laughs> just to stop him back in a way. Jez is actually taking a look towards that one. He did pull the shockwave on Shook last time around and didn't manage to do enough damage. He simply hasn't got the burst damage just yet. No, not enough ability power. And you know, that shockwave, it is a game-changing spell. If they, you know, hit the right people, and that's it on Froggen. It's a good land, but immediately flashed out of by Froggen. Dark binding was wide of the mark. Of course, Froggen able to just stroll away. Yeah, that looked all too easy for Froggen. As soon as the Dark Binding was coming in, he lined up his Flash and very easily repositioned to ensure that skill shot didn't connect. And you know, Froggen was down 20, 25 CS uh, earlier. Now it's only 10. He's, he's made up that deficit, and that's discounting the tower kills as well as uh, the two kills and four assists that yeah, he's grabbed. He's made up quite a bit, let's put it that way. He's put himself very much in the lead in yeah. that matchup between the two. Hourglass already completed. Infinity Edge now picked up by Candy Panda. Much needed item for the AD carriers. SK look to start grouping now. Of course, Dragon up in a minute and a half. We'll see whether Alliance do manage to push any objectives. We can see Froggen is going towards the top wave. He's going to clear that out. Shuf, some pressure on towards that top lane. Has got Destiny available if he needs to get down there. Wicked, meanwhile, his teleport's available shortly, but he's just sticking around with the rest of Alliance in the mid lane. Yeah, we need to see how it works. Look at the damage on the oh, Candy Panda. Oh, Candy Panda taking some big, big hits there. That's going to be Alliance taking his middle turret. SK not able to react. They've got to be careful. They're going too deep on that one. Taps taking the kick. Ace in the hole coming through. They're just going to turn the damage back around. There's Froggen going straight in. Sven Skerin goes down. Shook gets the kill on towards him. Shook goes deep on that one. They can't get on towards Candy Panda. Wild card thrown out. Froggen tries to catch it. Not going to get on there in the end, but it is. But Candy Panda finally dropped into the ultimate of tabs from long range, and it's a three for zero. 40 seconds until Dragon. It's more the mid turret they've got to worry about. Sven Skerin jumps into the middle of Alliance without really having the full support of the rest of his team. Jezus didn't even have Shockwave for the fight. Catches Nip, but it's not enough. The rest oh, of Alliance, but they're on the tower. Tabs gets him down. That's another kill. Tabs starting to rack these up now. If you've got him in your fancy points, he is scoring like gold does for you. That's going to be another turret going down, Alliance. Now they can take this bottom turret as well. There's a big wave there for Froggen. They're just taking everything from SK. 12 to 0 in kills. Not a single wow. reply from SK Gaming, and it's a 20-minute surrender, ladies and gentlemen. Froggen is surprised as everyone else, as SK Gaming are decimated by the top of the table. 14 wins, two losses, Alliance. Unbelievable performance from Alliance. Their composition always had the ability to flank and to gank with Evelyn and Twisted Fate. And they didn't care about Renekton or Lee Sin. They punished, and they just got in the faces of SK. Not a single death on the side of Alliance. 1-0-8 in the top lane. 4 0 4 for Tams. What is it? 4... Can't look for... 3 0 5 for Froggen. Just dominant. Dominant, dominant performances overall. A 1 0 8 from Nip as well. Those bubbles, key. Always on point. Of course, the way following through, they caught three members in that mid lane. SK Gaming just had no reply. None whatsoever. SK were outplayed in the laning phase. Their strongest uh, suit, as far as SK are concerned, is their mid to late game map movements and team-based decisions. They were never allowed to get there because they were punished so heavily by Twisted Fate, because they were punished so heavily by that Evelyn. And every single time uh, Alliance made a move, they got a kill. There was one gank where it didn't work, and that was trying to punish Sven Skeren for an invade. But every other time, top lane, river, jungle, 
it just all went Alliance's way. And you know, we talked about the mental edge at the start of the show. They were talking about it themselves, and you can't tell me SK were not compare, com, uh, worried about that fight because the mental edge clearly was against them. Yeah. And now the rest of the league are going to look at that match and see Alliance getting the fastest EU LCS game, by the way. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty confident I can say that yeah, one. Yeah, I think so too. 20 minutes, 58 seconds, I think it was at the end there. 21 crazy, officially. Crazy. 2101 officially in post game score. Gotta with, wait for the Nexus to with explode a few after seconds. surrender. Yeah. Cool yeah. guys don't look at explosions, but Alliance sure <laughs> as hell can buy the time to look at them. That was an incredibly dominant performance. If SK did not have a mental block going into the game, they will for the next one. Because SK are a team that scrap and fight and dig in deep. You go back to the spring split, you go back to the beginning of the summer split, and they were always going to 30, 40, 50 minutes because they could, because they had it in them to dig deep and defend and fight hard. They didn't even try against Alliance. Wow, what a crazy start to the day, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go over to the stage right now. Shox is standing by with Alliance's Wicked. Thank you very much, D-Man. I'm Afia Shox, supporter, joined here by the victorious vi Wicked of Alliance. A fast and swift victory for you guys in the first game of the day. Um, you guys were confident going into this one, I can presume, 2-0 and up, two and oh up already. What did you guys think after picks and bans? How did it go? Well, we got all the pick and bands we wanted, everything went according to our plan pretty much. And we just wanted to play it out and then, unlike Jesse said yesterday, they wouldn't make mistakes. They managed to make a lot of mistakes and we got an advantage out of that. So, when you have an advantage like that and the team that is second in the league right behind you and maybe one of your biggest competitors going into the end of the season and they surrender, does that give you a confidence boost somehow? So, I feel like... In League of Legends, it's a lot of mentally, and I think SK is extremely strong, but they weren't on the game for this game. So it doesn't give a huge confidence boost because if they had played an amazing match and had played really good and we beat them, that would give a bigger confidence boost for me because I think they're really strong still. Well, you guys overall also seem very confident. You opting for the Lulu here in this matchup. What do you think of the current meta? How does it suit you? I think the current meta is a lot of fun right now because a lot of 1v1s, sometimes there's jungle ganks and so on, but there's not that many 1v2s anymore and I like that a lot. Also, I learned to hit skill shots, which is nice because I can actually play stuff like Lula, so it's good. Which is nice indeed. Thank you very much, Wicked. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, Rockat takes on Millennium. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in three and a half. <laughs> 